Hey everyone, what's up? It is the Emperor Pro here, and in this episode, I'm going to be going over events. Um, as you've seen in the last episode, I believe it was, I kind of made a little teleport event. Well, now I'm going to be explaining different types of events. Okay, so, <clears throat> when you make an event, you want to go to the event layer, of course. You can right-click, create a new event. Um, somebody was actually trying to edit the player's event, but you can't do that. Because that's just a starting point. So, yeah, you can right-click, go to new event. And uh, here you have the event name. This this can come in handy. So we're gonna call this. Uh, we're gonna call it. You know, what? actually, I'm gonna leave it blank so I can actually show you why it's kind of important to name uh, your events. So the conditions. I'll be going over the conditions uh, when we need them. But right now we do not need them. So the, here's the graphic. You pretty much double click this, and it kind of uh, this right here comes up. So. Basically, here's where you can select what the graphic is for the event. You can also select from the tile sets. A cannot be selected. Uh, so basically, like only B and up uh, can be selected as a tile set. So if you want, if you want to blend, like um, there's actually a really cool trick you can do, where if you have like uh, this rock, for example, I know you can use these, but I'm just gonna use this as an example. You can have this rock, and you want like another rock behind it, but you see how you're missing that chunk. Well, to fix that, you would simply put an event with um, the top graphic. See there? Now, you have a complete uh, tile. It's not going to look spacey like that. Don't worry. So that's how you would kind of uh, use... It's called, like... I don't know if there's any official name for it, but basically you can use events to kind of add to your map. So for now, we're going to create an actor graphic, and it's going to be this little guy. He's, um, okay, right here, the options, you have the walking animation means, blah, blah, okay, basically what that means is, I'm kind of twisting my own words here, it, he can walk around with an animation, if you, if you uncheck that, he's pretty much gonna slide, it's like, he's not gonna, he's not gonna have the walking effect when he actually moves, stepping animation is, he's always in the walking animation, direction fix, uh, pretty much means, like, he, he's always gonna be facing that direction, uh, no matter what direction he's moving. So it looks like he's kind of strafing and walking backwards. Throw or through, that pretty much makes it um, like where everything can go through him. Hence its name. The um, autonomous moving, yeah, autonomous moving, but basically automatic moving. You can have it fixed where he's not moving at all. You can have it random where he'll move around randomly. Um, you can have it approach the player, or you can set it to custom. I'll be going over this shortly. <laughs> do not worry. Okay, so for now I'm going to do fixed. The speed uh, of the event here. This is how fast he moves when he does move. Um, normally, some townspeople have uh, three or four, sometimes two. And you just kind of play around with this. Uh, you, it pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, once you figure out how like they move, you can kind of get a basic grasp of it all. The um, the frequency is how often he moves. Uh, normal frequency is he, like he'll move like every other second, I believe, or every second or other second. Higher, I believe he moves like twice in one second. I think highest is where he just constantly moves around. Lowest is he barely moves. Lower is he moves, I think, once every two or three seconds. Okay, so the priority, same as characters. This means your character cannot go through uh, like below him or above him. He's on the same layer, so if the character bumps into it, it's going to stop the player from moving. Below the characters means your graphic will appear over it. Above the characters is his graphic will appear above you. The trigger, the action button, meaning like if you press enter or Z. Um, the player touch is if you bump into him. Event touch, I believe, is if he bumps into you. So like if he's walking around and he bumps into you. Auto run... It automatically starts the moment the map is loaded. Um, parallel process is pretty much the, the same, but the difference between these two is, you, if you have an auto run event to make some kind of crazy like flashiness on the screen, like if you want to have the screen fade in and out uh, often, you would not use auto run because auto run stops your player from moving. Parallel process does not unless there's text. Text will always stop your uh, character from moving unless you have a script. So I'm going to leave it on the action button, and we're just going to be creating something basic in this episode. Uh, in the future, I will go over a bunch more um, stuff, 
like all the other events. Uh, actually, matter of fact, I started Season 5 of the RPG Maker VX Ace Tutorials. And that's kind of going over every one of the events. Uh, I'm, I need to continue that sometime. Because that would be a really good tutorial for you guys to watch. Because you can really, really get really in-depth with all the, uh, all the details of uh, the events. For now, we're just going to have him say a message. Now, I've, I've explained how this works in Season 5, Episode 1. Uh, SE05E1. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and kind of explain a little bit again. You can display the name of a character you have in your database by simply typing backslash n, and then in between uh, brackets, those little half squares, type the number. Our first character is Eric, so that's why Eric would show up. Uh, you can also change the color of your message and the size. So let's say you want to say hello, and then you can change the color by typing slash c, and then a number. I forget how high the number is. I think I mentioned it in the uh, season 5, though. Let's see. Let's do 12. Number 12. Name. And then you do backslash C0 to reset it back to white. Happy face. As you can see, it changes the color of the text. If you want to change the size of the text, you can simply do... What was it? Uh, I need to see this. Hmm, where is it? Okay, there it is. You can do backslash and then hold shift and press the half square, the bracket. And I think that decreases it. No, it increases it. So you can say... O, and then you can be like, increase it again, may, gosh, oh my gosh, okay, and then you can decrease it by doing the opposite, it's a freaking slime, by the way, it's a reference to a thing that I mentioned a while back, uh, I, I kind of had like this little random series that I was doing, um, but it, I don't know, like it didn't... I don't know, it's kind of like, it's not that I lost inspiration, it's just I didn't feel like drawing anymore to add to it. It was in um, Baderpi's Adventures, and he was like, oh my gosh, it's a freaking slime. So that's where this is kind of referencing from. Um, yeah. <laughs> so before I lose my train of thought anymore, I'm going to go ahead and explain a couple more things. The text automatically types out when you're uh, in the game. You can Again, you can have scripts to change that if you wanted to. Um, you can also set the background by selecting here. A dim background. It looks black here, but it's actually like a transparent, like see-through dark background. Transparent is completely see-through. There is no there is no window background. So uh, I'm going to have this in normal window. Now, if you want to have your text wait a little bit, you can do these commands here. I'll display them on the screen. Well, by hovering over this. Slash. Okay, a backslash period waits one-fourth of a second. A backslash and then like a big tall forward slash thingy <laughs> uh, waits one second and the slash explanation mark waits for you to press the button. You can also display the entire line without typing it out by simply typing backslash and then that little arrow thing that you see here. And that's going to cause it all to kind of type out. Yeah, These little arrows, um, if you have a face over here you can select the face graphics which will display next to it, which I'll show you now. You'll see that this text kind of goes off. That's because if you have a face, this first arrow represents where the text is around about going to be cut off. So you have to kind of make sure you don't go over this uh, little arrow here if you have a face. If you don't have a face, you can't. You know, you want to make sure you don't go over this arrow. I think there are scripts to um, to kind of like automatically line break. I'm not sure. I think I heard of a script something like that before. Okay, the position. The position, like, it's... Okay, there are three different positions that you can have. Um, that doesn't sound dirty. That <laughs> You can have the top position, middle position, or bottom position. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm being immature right now, but it's kind of funny to say. Though the top will appear on the top of the screen, middle, center of the screen, and bottom, the bottom of the screen. The batch entry, this basically allows you to create multiple ones. So after you've had four lines of text, the fifth line, every fifth line will be a new uh, new window message. I like how I kind of did a hand gesture there. <laughs> so if we did that on the fifth line, four, and then on the fifth line of that, did the more, it would create more messages. As you can see, it creates three uh, text events. 
So that's pretty much how that works. And now we're going to click OK. We're going to play test it. <laughs> hey, everybody. Oh my gosh, it's a freaking slime. So yeah, uh, he says, oh my gosh, it's a freaking slime. You see, he faces you. Now, when playtesting, you can actually hold control as a quick tip. Uh, I can't do it, though, because my host button is control <laughs> for a Dropbox or a virtual box. Oh, I can do it with the other one, though. So, yeah, you can hold left or right control uh, to kind of debug, and you can move anywhere you want to. There will also be no random battles when playtesting if you hold control. You let go of control, and it all resets, so you, you, you have normal collisions again and all that. So, um, that's been this episode. Like, I thank you guys so very much for watching, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys like this. You know, if, uh, if it was good or not. So, oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Do stay tuned with Season 5. Uh, it will teach you all about these different events. So, I'll see you guys later. Thank you all so much for watching.